11 Sports presents St. Luke's Sports Medicine Game of the Week. Catasauqua High School, the site for Colonial League basketball action. It's the Colonial League boys semifinals. Our D11sports.com game of the week presented by St. Luke Sports Medicine. Number four, Northwestern Lehigh Tigers, 13 and five, 16 and seven overall, taking on the top seed, Notre Dame Crusaders. They check in with a mark of 18 and 0 and 20 and two overall. It's our D11sports.com game of the week presented by St. Luke Sports Medicine. Hi, and welcome everyone. Al DeCarlo alongside Ben Tannis. So glad you could join us. We're excited for this matchup. They met earlier this year, back on January 23rd, 69-66 Notre Dame. This is going to be a good one. Yeah, it's going to be a great one. Uh, you know, Notre Dame has always been known for their defensive pressure. They love to get up and down and play. Uh, and there's not a lot of teams that wanted to do that with them tonight. Well, Northwestern definitely wants to play with them. Uh, you know, they also like to get up and down. So they're going to be able to challenge them. And it's going to be playing to the strengths of both of them. They, they're going to both love being in this fast-paced game. Well, Northwestern under head coach Pat Wanamaker in his first year, coming off a win against Banger, the five seed. Uh, they've won four in a row. So peaking at the right time, Gavin Nelson, their junior guard. Yeah, and Gavin Nelson, you know, he's he's going to do a little bit of both on uh, on a little bit of uh, good on both ends. Uh, he's going to guard uh, the point guard for uh, Notre Dame, and he's their leading scorer as well. So he's their leader on both sides of the ball. On the other side for Pat Boyle in his 28th year, now 504 wins. They beat Wilson 74-65. They haven't played since uh, February 6th. They have won 12 in a row. Colin Boyle, well, it's nice when your son's uh, playing pretty well. Yeah, and when you look at him as being co-MVP of the league, you know, he only averages 12.6 points a game, but he, he's a chameleon. He can do a, a little bit of everything. He can do what, what he's asked. So there's times where he's a scorer. There's times uh, when he, they need him to pass. He is, uh, you know, uh, one of their leading rebounders. So he does a little bit of everything with the goal in mind of just winning. He, he's a, he's a big-time competitor. Well, Jensen Buse from Banger is joining us right now. She's a student reporter. She has talked to both coaches. Jensen, your first report. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Jensen Buse. I got the opportunity to talk to Coach Wanamaker from Northwestern Lehigh, and he said he thinks they can beat Notre Dame in a half-court game as long as they keep their up-tempo offense going. And when I talked to Coach Boyle of Notre Dame, he said they just need to keep playing the way they've been playing and have a couple other players in the double digits. And as of their injury, not injury, but sickness, he thinks that they can bounce back, but they haven't practiced. But he has full faith in his team. Back to you guys. All right, Jensen, thanks a lot. And we'll hear from her at halftime with uh, the leading scorers uh, or the leading coach. Right now, we'll pause. We'll get ready for the action. You're watching our D11sports.com Game of the Week, Northwestern, Notre Dame next. Since 1919, the name Reichenbach Oil has been synonymous with reliability and community. That's because for the past 100 years, we've been delivering heating oil to Lehigh Valley homes at ultra-competitive pricing seven days a week with auto delivery and easy payment options to fit your needs. And we offer same-day delivery. When you need oil delivered, think Reichenbach. 100 years of serving the Lehigh Valley community. Reichenbach Oil, delivery you can count on. St. Luke's Children's Hospital. Ready to help all kids. They're keeping kids healthy. Fixing us up. Making us feel bad. Helping kids be the best they can be. Because it's about us. The kids. It's St. Luke's Children's Hospital. St. Luke's Children's Hospital is helping kids with everything. From routine checkups to specialized care. It's here. It's great. Yeah. St. Luke's Orthopedic Care. Extraordinary care in motion. We are back. So glad you could join us. Looking forward to a great matchup between these two teams. Again, they met earlier this year, and it was a 69-66 win for the Crusaders. Al DiCola, Ben Tannis. 
Sean Kelly, Sports Fan Base Network. Jensen Buse from Banger with us as well. And we have three double headers going on at the same time. We're here, we're at Catasauqua, we're in Whitehall, and we're also in March Hall for a bunch of games. So excited to be here to give you all those games as well. And we also have some student reporters at the PPL Center as well. Let's take a look at the keys to the game as we bring that in to start things off. So we talked a little bit about Northwestern's keys. They, they do want to play up up tempo with uh, Notre Dame. The, the problem with that is that you have to make sure that you're able to handle their pressure because otherwise that up tempo is going to play right into Notre Dame's hands. So they have to make sure that they don't turn the ball over uh, while at the same time being able to score and transition themselves. Um, you know, and, and for Notre Dame, it's kind of always been the, the same for them. They, they share the basketball. They play as five. All guys can shoot and score all at the same time, and they want to continue that. Yeah, obviously Nelson's going to be a key factor, so they want to take him out of his game if they can. St. Luke's the region's largest sports medicine provider, covering more than 200,000 student enrollment and 40,000 student athletes in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. Covering counties and providing the most comprehensive and advanced treatment for athletic injuries. St. Luke's offers athletic training, orthopedic care, physical therapy, and concussion management, plus sports performance training for individual athletes and teams. During these extraordinary times, you trust St. Luke's sports medicine to provide extraordinary care. This game is brought to you by the Reichenbach Oil Company, celebrating over 100 years of providing the Lehigh Valley with convenient, reliable home heating oil delivery. Proud to support all District 11 athletics. Mention you heard us on the D11 Sports broadcast and receive $25 off of your next delivery. Got that done today, by the way. Super fast. D11 Sports thanks Joseph Hoffmeyer, Senior Vice President, Financial Advisor at Morgan Stanley in Allentown for sponsorship of tonight's game. For all your investment needs, call Joseph Hoffmeyer at 610-391-6353, located at 515 West Hamilton Street, 7th floor in Allentown, 18101. Morgan Stanley Smith Barney, LLC, member SIPC. If you're a student from any District 11 school interested in broadcasting, journalism, or photography, check out d11sports.com. Follow your dream and get close to the action as you take part in our student internship program. For more information, contact your athletic director or reach out to myself or Dave at d11sports.com. I'll bring in the starting five for these teams. And again, we expect a good matchup. Mason Bollinger, Eli Zimmerman, Ethan Kozlowski, Gavin Nelson, Shane Marth. And for Notre Dame, Isaiah Miles, Colin Boyle, Cam Bond, Dane Vassalo, and Danny Dar Darno. You know, you look at Isaiah Miles, some people don't know. His sister, Olivia, plays for the University of Notre Dame, one of the best players in the country. You know, doing a great job for, you know, from nearby uh, Phillipsburg, New Jersey. So interesting there as well. Want to thank Tom Mole for his hospitality as well. And we are ready to go. So we get ready for this matchup. We expect a great matchup between the two teams. Again, it was won by Notre Dame, but only by three. And quickly, straight to the glass. Got too far underneath. And couldn't convert. That was Cameron Bond. Instead, we'll come the other way. Here's Zimmerman. And in 10 seconds, we can already see the pace of this game. It's pretty slow, you're saying, right? <laughs> On the kick out. Here's a three. That one's short. They get the rebound, fighting it down. And great job on the turnaround by Gavin Nelson. Can't get that one to fall. A third opportunity on the turnaround. That one won't drop. So three chances for the Tigers. And they may get a fourth chance here. Yeah, and that was the, one of the keys for Notre Dame as well was to limit second chance points. That's not a very good indication on that first possession. Northwestern the four. Notre Dame the one. The winner gets either Palmerton or Saucon Valley. First pass of the game. Goes to Mason Bollinger. And if you give a team four chances, most likely they're going to score. We are underway from Catasauqua High School. Masalo. Outside to Miles. Miles with the jumper. That one off the mark. Straight through the defense, Gavin Nelson, 4-0 Northwestern. Not necessarily a fast break opportunity, but you know, as soon as he got over half court, he looked to attack early. And 
And what's so difficult about Garden Notre Dame is they just play this motion offense where they all just move well without the basketball. It's very difficult to guard. And, and the steal taken away. Lost the handle for a second, but goes up and scores the basket is Danny Darno. Offensive foul here on the Tigers. They're going to assess that to Gavin Nelson. They have a good job rotating over and taking the charge. Uh, you know, and, and now Nelson, who's, who's a guard that is able to score by attacking all the time. You wonder if that's going to be in his mind a little bit, um, you know, the next time he goes. He doesn't want to pick up another one and knows that they're going to be looking for that charge. Notre Dame trying to join the girls. That one knocked away. Great job defensively by Shane Marth, who stands at six foot five. Yeah, and he's made his impact already. He, he attacks the glass real hard. Uh, he's a good job, uh, does a good job of rim protecting. He's going to have a big impact on this game tonight. Boyle from way downtown, everything but the basket. And Marth comes up with another board. Underneath, count it. I, that was a great run. That, that, two more. I mean, he sprinted out, and, and you talk about uh, most teams, rim run. He was able to run to the short corner, hide himself, and be able to get the bucket. Great move by Miles. Just couldn't finish it off there. Eli Zimmerman from the outside. That hits the side of the rim. Taken back by Miles. 6-2 Tigers lead here. Three minutes in. Outside shot. That one hits the back of the rim by Bond. And it'll be Northwestern basketball. It got quiet here for just a second. Yeah, and, well, and this is the pressure that, that uh, you know, Coach Wanamaker was talking about. Uh, if they're in a half-court set, they're going to struggle a little bit just to get the ball to their wings because of the aggressive defense that Notre Dame plays. So they want to make sure that they get up and down or have sets they can go to. I mean, every pass is going to be contest contested here. They're going to have to make sure they go to the basketball all the time. So 6-2 in the early going for the Tigers. Try to get the ball in, they do. And the quick shot by Bollinger is off the mark. Here comes Boyle. Boyle just floats one up. Does not get bailed out. Instead, there's numbers coming the other way. Zimmerman on one wing. They go the other way. And a good Lost job it. by Notre Dame. Defense, three guys collapse down low. Yeah, and Kozlowski just seemed a little uncomfortable catching the basketball there. Uh, maybe not if Nelson hangs on to it a little bit longer, he's able to find a, a ball through for a layup. Boyle's a little shaken up here, or uh, he's got some blood on his knee. So Miles, who averages 10 points a game, you look at this team, and not that many teams that you're going to see that have, I think, four players in double figures. Yeah, and, and that's what makes them so difficult to guard because all of them can put the ball on the floor, all of them can shoot. They do a good job of moving off of each other. And we said about the core, uh, the girls as Cameron Bond buries a three. is 36th of the year, 6-5. The girls can all shoot threes, and you know who to guard there. Yeah, and, and once, you know, once they can get their offense going, they all feed off of one another. Nice feed underneath. You can't convert, second effort. Yeah, great half-court offense there by uh, Northwestern. Just got to be able to finish that off, big fella. Joshua Wambold, take a look. Yep, so they're running a pick and roll. Instead of throwing the guard throwing it, uh, the, the other big man was able to fire that basketball into him. Wambold makes the first. He's at 58% on the season. Now he's two and a half points a game. Second one, no good. Hey, 
Remains 7-5 in favor of the Tigers. Boyle. Uh, he makes it look so easy. The one that rimmed out earlier, yeah, and just like that, bad. Notre Dame has their first lead. Yeah, he looks real focused right now. And I think I think Northwestern is just a little passive on their defense right now. I think they want to get up and pressure them. Uh, they're just a little afraid to right now, and, and I think that's uncharacteristic of them. They want to get after them a little bit in their man-to-man -man defense. Three on the other side for Wambold. No, ball loose. Marth had it, now sends it across. Bollinger had a shot, that couldn't connect, and possession arrow goes to the Tigers. So Del Tyler, number 22, checks into the game. I like the way this guy plays. Saw him against Southern Lehigh. You know, gets some minutes, and when he does, he makes the most out of him, no question. Yeah, high energy guy. Zimmerman from the corner, that one no good. But again, it, it, it's difficult for Notre Dame to get out of, uh, you, know, you know, their half-court defense because they are not, just not rebounding the basketball right now. And I, eventually that's going to take a toll. Changing directions on the hands was Caleb Hobby. And now they got to go. <sighs> Harris may have stepped with that one. Coach Boyle saying he did. Officials say no. There's three officials on the court. A lot more in the stands. <laughs> Two more. You know, I, I asked, you know, I asked Coach Watermaker to start the game, like, is, is Bollinger going to be confident in this situation? He's only a sophomore. And he, he actually told us that sometimes he's too confident. And, uh, you know, that, that is actually helpful right here in these situations, in these big games, being able to play. And he's been aggressive offensively, and I think he needs to continue to go at it. So 9-8. Zimmerman flying down the court. This is the first time we've seen really a set play here for the Tigers. We got a quick timeout here. Timeout 9 8. This quarter brought to you by Strategic Benefits One Group in the Lehigh Valley, a premier. Broker in helping small, medium, and large businesses help a competitive employee benefits package, which includes retirement plan services and managing clients locally, as well as more than 12 states. Visit their website at strategicbenefitsonegroup.com. We thank them for their continued dedication and support of D11sports.com, Mike Legoe, and Strategic Benefits One Group. Right now, 9-8. Eight. And we talk about Northwestern wanting to play up-tempo, but for them to win you know, a semifinal game here. They're going to have to have sets that they go to uh, in the half court. And I, and I think they had that one where they had the, you know, the diagonal pass, big big man to big man. And, and they're going to have to find chances to be able to do that. And I think if they play through um, Bollinger and Marth, I think they're going to be able to make that happen because there's so much pressure on their guards right now. That one taken away. Chance for the Crusaders to regain the lead once again. Boyle, that one's short. A lot of verbiage going on in the court. Yeah. We can hear it. Yeah, a lot of talking going on early on. Sometimes you don't like to hear that talking early on. Harris, no, and all of a sudden, North, uh, excuse me, Notre Dame is controlling the boards a little bit more. And straight to the glass. Notre Dame now is being able to control the pace by pressuring 
Northwestern and making them take time to bring the basketball up the floor. Harris kicks it outside. Noah down 32 seconds after the rebound. Boyle along with Matt Mahalik of North uh, Palmerton named co-MVPs. Now this is going to be tough here because you know they're going to go at the end, and I'm not sure there's anybody in the in the league that can stay in front of Miles. Oh, Here's Miles deep. takes it, doesn't get it. Four seconds on the clock. They can see if they let one fly. It counts if it goes. It does not. 10-9 Crusaders after one. You're watching our D11Sports.com Game of the Week presented by St. Louis Sports Medicine. Since 1919, the name Reichenbach Oil has been synonymous with reliability and community. That's because for the past 100 years, we've been delivering heating oil to Lehigh Valley homes at ultra-competitive pricing seven days a week with auto delivery and easy payment options to fit your needs. And we offer same-day delivery. When you need oil delivered, think Reichenbach. 100 years of serving the Lehigh Valley community. Reichenbach Oil, delivery you can count on. St. Luke's Orthopedic Care. Extraordinary care in motion. One in the books as we welcome you back here to Catasauqua High School. 10-9 in favor of Notre Dame. Aldecola, Ben Tannis, Jensen Bust. And Ben, your thoughts first quarter? Uh, I thought it was a good first quarter, but you know, I, I think that both teams can't be satisfied with, with the, the one-point game here. They both need to make adjustments. Uh, Northwestern has to make sure that they get into their offense faster. Notre Dame is being able to control the pace of the game, um, you know, by applying their pressure. And then Notre Dame needs to make sure that they take advantage of plays like that. When they get in scoring opportunities, they're going to have to be able to finish them off, and then they're going to have to do a better job on the on the defensive boards. And that was Vasallo with his basket. Couldn't sure on that one. Pass across and. Thought they had there. Vassal gets fouled. I think it was Jordan, Jordan Smith. Jordan right? Smith. Yep. They got it. <laughs> I was too busy talking too much. Good pass here. You know, and th those are the things they have to finish those off in big plays. And Northwestern's got to get back and make sure they they get the rebound. In these kind of big time games, you can't assume anything. You have to make sure that you play to the whistle. Um, you know, and that, that was a big missed opportunity by both teams. Uh, Notre Dame should have finished it, and since they missed it, Northwestern should have been able there, been there to get that rebound. This is the free throw. So 12-9 here at the start of the second quarter. Notre Dame on top. Nice feed underneath. And, and that's what Northwestern needs to do. Northwestern needs to continue to run that same offense. That's the second time that they've been able to get that diagonal pass because when they come off the ball screen, North, or, uh, Notre Dame commits so much to the ball handler. Boyle on the kick out. Three in and out. So we've seen that three times tonight by Notre Dame in and out. Yeah, and they'll keep shooting. Uh, you know, those kind of things, don't they don't stick with them. They know that's their game, and they have to just keep playing. Six fifty-three on the clock. And that one knocked away. Ball still there. Bond with a great pass to Boyle. Boyle's got seven. I think Northwestern needs to just let Bollinger bring the ball up. Here's Zimmerman. Three players on, up top. Who wants it? Two good driving kicks there. The first one by Fitch to be able to kick it to Zimmerman. Zimmerman attacked the middle again, was able to kick it out. 
Good knockdown by Nelson, which is not necessarily part of his game. Coyle's already got nine. Yeah, he's attacking real well, and, you know, like I said, he, he's a competitor, so he lives for these games. These big games is where he's going to shine to make sure his team wins. Comes up with a crafty steal here. And he goes straight up and scores two more. So six and a quarter for Boyle. mentioned and we have a bunch of games going on there's a three and right now a good one between Saucon Valley and Palmerton 30 to 29 Saucon Valley up by one so we expected that kind of tempo in that game as well we got a foul call here I think Peterson's calling for his hand on the back but uh, looks all clean up top So Bond, this is the first one. He's averaging three assists and two and a half steals. You know, you look at Bond, 35 three-pointers. You look at Boyle, 45 three-pointers. Uh, like a one-two punch. Yeah, and they'll shoot it from anywhere. They'll shoot shots that you don't expect them to shoot. Uh, you know, and then you, you mix in, you know, Miles with 24 three-pointers. There, there's a lot to have to be able to defend on Notre Dame's team. That's something you don't see much. Fine, and then we'll fight for the ball. And if Ty Tyler came up with a big rebound, he's just got to make a better outlet pass. I mean, they're having all sorts of issues just trying to inbound the basketball. Nice feet underneath. Ooh, that that one smacked from behind. So, so, Ben, so in the beginning of the game, the game was flying up and down. Now that goes underneath, and there's a basket by Jordan Smith. He's got four. It's starting to get a little feisty out there as well. Do you notice that? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're jawing at each other a little bit. But when you play up-tempo and there's so much pressure constantly that you have to deal with, uh, the emotion of the game gets huge. You know, and then, you know, there's – different foul calls being made, and then there's time for them to talk to one another. But, yes, it, it's definitely going to be like this the rest of the game as long as Northwestern here can make sure that they, they finish off a few plays here because it's the momentum starting to go Notre Dame's way. Tigers down just like that by six. They were down after one 10-9. That one tap back outside. Here's Zimmerman, drives through, and we'll go to the free throw line. And, and I think uh, Northwestern, just to, even just to start that offense, did a good job of going back door. That's the second time now that uh, Cannon Fitch has been able to find somebody going back door. And this is a good attack by Zimmerman to be able to stay with it. He's made a lot of those feisty plays, like you said, uh, being able to come up with the, those 50-50 balls. But they got to finish off plays here. They got to put the ball in the basket. Yeah, missing some free throws, too. Second one is no good. So two missed free throws, and it's Boyle that comes up with it. They try to get a steal. Boyle's so shifty in the open court, just this change of pace creates opportunities for him. Nice oh, look at work. How about taking Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, that was great footwork by, by Miles, everything but the finish. But he even used his left hand on the finish. Mm -hmm. He's an impressive looking player. Northwestern's got to do a better job coming back to the basketball. They're, they're kind of fading away from Notre Dame's pressure, and they got to want to come to it. They'll get Zimmerman. You know, listening to the crowd or hearing the crowd a little bit as we can, because we're almost in the crowd, uh, you're kind of just like waiting to see like a feel. Like right now there's, you, you don't know what's, yeah. you know, where are we at here. We're waiting for a big play. You know, it's kind of been stuck here at 2014. They try to feed that one, that one. And it was at the five-minute mark, so 
About a minute has passed, still no points from there. Sits it in a corner. And Good finish. count that one. Yeah. Good job by Nelson. Yeah, I mean, Nelson's impressive. He, he's only 5'11", and he's able to hang in the air and finish uh, amongst traffic. And just hanging there was Dave Vassallo with his first two. This is that pressure that, that Wanamaker was talking about. They, they've got to be able to get the ball in bounds and get going. They're, they're exerting so much energy, and it's becoming frustrating for them. Last year, Notre Dame win the championship in double overtime against Saucon Valley. Here comes the pressure again, and a timeout. Timeout with 3.12 on the clock. Yeah, and that pressure, they're, they're doubling him so far away from the basket. That's where he's got to get rid of the basketball quicker. That's where they've been able to find those diagonal passes to finish. Game brought to you by the Reichenbach Oil Company, celebrating over 100 years of providing the Lehigh Valley with convenient and reliable home heating oil delivery. I'm proud to support all District 11 athletics. Imagine you heard us on a D11 Sports Game broadcast and receive $25 off of your next oil delivery. Now is the time to get your fill-up. D11 Sports thanks Joseph Hoffmeyer, Senior Vice President, Financial Advisor at Morgan Stanley in Allentown for the sponsorship of tonight's game. For all your investment needs, call Joseph Hoffmeyer at 610-391-6353, located at 515 West Hamilton Street, 7th floor in Allentown. Morgan Stanley Smith Barney, LLC member, SIPC. If you're a student from any District 11 school interested in broadcasting, journalism, or photography, check out d11sports.com. Follow your dream, get close to the action. Take part in our student internship program. For more information, contact your athletic director or myself or Dave at d11sports.com. A five second call. So he had a five second call. He had the ball in his hands for five seconds. He could have put the ball on the floor and got another five seconds. Why did he do that? I'm not sure. <laughs> Maybe he thought the count was at three. Miles, that one got tipped. Over Good to Simran. Nice outlet pass. That was perfection. Oh, wow. Right to the hands of Gavin Nelson from Zimmerman. Zimmerman or, uh, Nelson had a good block on Miles and then was able to get pretty close to the rim being challenged by Miles. Good heads up play. Right. Boyle try to make that pass. Oh, that's it. And now we're going to walk the floor. Here's the uh, that new rule. So, Ben, the last, I mean, you can even say six minutes, right? Uh, it's been controlled by, by Notre Dame. You just mentioned it, walking the floor for 225. Northwestern really has to take advantage of this situation. Yeah, they do. And, and this is earlier in this quarter I talked about how Notre Dame needs to take advantage of their opportunities. And, and even just that last play down there, Colin Boyle made a good move, and he had a wide-open guy who he was passing it to. It was just a poor pass. Those things have to be shored up uh, to be able to – be able to extend this lead. Ethan Kozlowski makes one of two to cut the lead to three. But you're right, Notre Dame needs to take advantage of, or uh, Northwestern needs to take advantage of this because, you know, Notre Dame can't be as, Notre Dame can't be as aggressive defensively. Basket and one by Vassalo. So he's got four, goes to the free throw line where he's at 64%, looking to extend the lead. He got Wombold on the foul for Northwestern. Needs some help. They got Wombold. Quick pass over to Barger. And lost the handle. Gets it right back. And going to go into reverse and get the foul. That's a great job. Yeah. And, and 
and this is what North Northwestern needs to do. If Notre Dame's going to send two guys at half court, they have to be able to throw the ball over top and look to get to the basket. It's a great way to stay with it by Bollinger. Nice reverse. And Fasalo had nothing to do but to foul him. But, if you, I mean, when watching that replay, you can see all the Notre Dame guys are above the foul line. And Northwestern, if they're able to just make a good pass through that initial pressure, they should be able to get opportunities at the rim. So Bollinger now has 10 points. And the lead back down to four with two minutes on the clock. Masala, one thing with Masala, he will take that three if you give it to him. And, and the other thing, he's got, he's got a great head fake. Like, that's like the fourth time they've got him. He's been able to get his guy up in the air and go to the basket. Uh, Boyle's dangerous right here. 135 on the clock. And a trip to the free throw line for Danny Darno. We talked about those foul situations. All of a sudden, it's starting to even up a little yep. bit. And that, that's the, the first time here Notre Dame has been able to get what they look for. They're able to drive and be able to get those dump-offs. And they've had it, but the athleticism of Northwestern has just been able to affect their passes a little bit. That's the first time that one of those was able to get through. Six twenty-one. That one taken by Boyle with one thirty on the clock. Boyle gets trapped in the corner and just moves forward, and they get a wide-open look up top. That one won't draw for Jacob Miklos. You know, one player we haven't seen in the game for a while is Shea Marth for the Tigers. Yeah, did he get in foul trouble? I don't know. I didn't. Twenty-six, twenty-one, fifty-four seconds. Vassalo for three. And like you said, he'll shoot that. He's, he's got a, a big impact on this game. And that, that, that three is just going to make things even tougher. So he's been going to the basket, giving the pump fake. This time they laid off him, knocked it down. So he's not, like you said, he's not afraid to shoot it. And he's been able to make some room going to the basket. This quarter brought to you by Strategic Benefits One Group in the Lehigh Valley, a premier broker in helping small, medium, and large businesses. Building competitive employee benefits package, which includes retirement plan services and managing clients locally, as well as in more than 12 states. Visit their website, strategicbenefitsonegroup.com. We thank them for their continued dedication and support for D11sports.com, Mike Legoe, and Strategic Benefits One Group. So 29-21. If you're the Tigers right here, you'd like to close or be, you can't go more than eight. You know? Yeah. You know, I said, you know, get down to five, whatever. This is a huge possession. But this is where, you know, Notre Dame tends to open up games. They can smell blood. You can see that they're coming with a little bit of pressure uh, after Notre or after Northwestern had just called timeout. So big possession here for the Tigers, down by eight with 40 seconds left. So you want to make good decisions here, but you want to stay aggressive and be able to score. Quick passing, Bollinger, and that one. It was off the Crusades with 31 seconds. And that's what you want to do. I think that was going to be a layup if Bollinger makes a bounce pass <coughs> instead of a chest pass. And Isaiah Miles was just waiting for that one. Nice Over pass. to Bond. That one gets tipped. Northwestern, four on two coming the other way. Hand in the face, no, ball loose, final 14 ticks. 
They'll probably get the last one here. So six seconds on the clock. Boyle turns and scores. 31-21 at the break. In favor of Notre Dame, Jensen Bust going to try to track down Coach Boyle, and she does. And we'll go down to Jensen now. I'm Jensen Buse. I'm here with Coach Pat Boyle. So, you're leading by 10 going into the second half. What are your thoughts? Oh, a lot of game left. We, you know, we, you know we, we saw Northwestern the other night, down 10 to banger. They're not going to stop coming. Uh, we got to keep playing good half-court defense, creating some turnovers. Uh, but we got to do a better job on the defensive boards. Mm -hmm. And they're... Northwestern's up-tempo style of plays was proving to be a bit of a challenge for you guys in the beginning. How did you bounce back from that? Yeah, when we took some bad shots, it turned into transition baskets for them. When we get better quality shots, less, less fast break opportunities for them. Good luck in the second half. Back to you guys. Thanks, Jensen. Great job. We thank Pat Boyle for taking his time and talking to us. And we are at the half. It's a 10-point lead. It was 10-9 Notre Dame after one. It's 31-21 Notre Dame at the break. So glad you could join us. You're watching our D11sports.com Game of the Week presented by St. Luke's Sports Medicine. It's here for real. It's St. Luke's Children's Hospital. Ready to help all kids. They're keeping kids healthy. Fixing us up. Making us feel better. Helping kids be the best they can be. Because it's about us. The kids. It's St. Luke's Children's Hospital! St. Luke's Children's Hospital is helping kids with everything, from routine checkups to specialized care. It's here! It's great! Yeah! It's Since 1919, the name Reichenbach Oil has been synonymous with reliability and community. That's because for the past 100 years, we've been delivering heating oil to Lehigh Valley homes at ultra-competitive pricing seven days a week with auto delivery and easy payment options to fit your needs. And we offer same-day delivery. When you need oil delivered, think Reichenbach. 100 years of serving the Lehigh Valley community. Reichenbach Oil, delivery you can count on. The team that we have put together of sport performance coaches and athletic trainers is why parents should choose St. Luke's University Health Network for their sport performance needs. St. Luke's and our coaches are going to provide the safest and most comprehensive training environment that a student athlete would want. And I, I don't think there's anything in this area that can rival it. Fame pitcher Steve Carlton knows what it takes to exceed expectations. He knows what it means to be part of a team that rises above the competition. He knows a champion. Steve Carlton knows St. Luke's Orthopedic Care. Do you want to have your child see the pediatrician, but you wonder if now is a safe time? Well visits and vaccines are more important now than ever. St. Luke's Pediatrics offers options to streamline your visit, like over-the-phone screenings before you come in, virtual visits you could do from home, and some practices even offer curbside consultations. St. Luke's wants to keep you and your child safe and healthy, so call us today. St. Luke's, my health, my hospital, our community. We are back. 31-21 is your score. So glad you could join us here at D11sports.com. Game of the Week presented by St. Luke's Sports Medicine. It's Northwestern and Notre Dame. Uh, Al DiCarlo alongside Ben Tannis. Ben, your thoughts first half? Uh, you know, I think uh, that Notre Dame in the second quarter really ramped up their pressure. Um, I think in the first half or the first quarter, they were doing it just kind of to slow down Northwestern. And I think they realized that they actually could turn Northwestern over. And I think Northwestern, either the, the magnitude of the game or just the speed of the game right now, they're struggling a little bit to come back to the basketball uh, or beat that pressure. You know, whenever a team's press, you, you always want to say if they're, if they're going to press, you want to make them pay, meaning that you want to get the ball you know, down close to your basket, throw a, a solid pass through that pressure, and then go attack to get them out of that press. 
Um, and that's what Northwestern's got to do here coming out of the second half. I, th I think that's everything. It's just being able to deal with Notre Dame's pressure. Well, right now, Bollinger has 10. Zerman still scoreless. A point for Joshua Wambold. Kozlowski has a point, and Gavin Nelson has nine for the Crusaders. Jordan Smith has four, 13 for Colin Boyle. Bond has three, Vasallo has eight, and Danny Darno has three points. Again, and the winner will either get Saucon Valley or Palmerton. They're also playing. Yeah, and that, that kind of balanced scoring is what Northwestern wants, but they you can see their, their side of their score sheets. Uh, relatively blank, you know, with really only two guys scoring. Uh, whereas right now, Notre Dame's kind of got a one-two punch and then guys playing off of that. Uh, you got Colin Boyle being able to score in transition. And then in the half court, Masalo has been a big uh, problem for Northwestern. He's been able to get those guys up in the air and get to the basket to get himself a bucket or find somebody else. Uh, I mentioned a historic night for D11 Sports. Uh, thank my partner, Dave Micah Jr., uh, the athletic directors as well in, uh, in the Colonial League and the Schuylkill League. And uh, you know, making things happen for us as, you know, everything got changed around with us and people are moving everywhere. So instead, we go with three game, three double headers in one night. Takes a lot of effort. Uh, first off, you know, I want to thank Ari Bluestein, who heads Sports Fan Base Network and his crew, Sean Riley, Sean Kelly, Kevin Conley, and all their camera guys uh, doing a great job. Uh, ben and I are here with uh, Jensen Bust. Uh, Matt Province is with Kareem Fritz and Luke Stefanisco at Mart's Hall. Chase uh, Eller from... Uh, Wilson, he's in the booth with Braun Holland and Dave Micah over at Whitehall. So a lot going on, uh, and we give that opportunity to our fans to be able to, to, to give you all these games on YouTube. And, you know, just click on our YouTube channel, and you can see all games going on right time. We're at the half. It's 31-21. Well, the other game, one of the other games going on right now is a doozy as well at Whitehall. What do we 42 41 Saucon Valley Ooh. over Palmerton with 123 left in the fourth quarter. Oh, wow. They're ahead, so... We may be able to watch this game yeah. before it ends. Yeah, and I li and I like what how, what the Colonial League did by staggering those starts so that you could get to see uh, both games uh, if you needed to. Like for um, Northwestern fans, they were able to get over here to see the boys game. But it's also nice to be able to to know who you're going to be playing, um, you know, during the game for us viewers to be able to see uh, both those things going on. Meanwhile, Mahoney area is cruising right now in the third, 41-28 over Pottsville. Mahoney area is still undefeated. Josh Cop. He's headed to the championship. He's watching our YouTube channel, I'm sure, trying to figure out what's going on. Yeah, he definitely is. I'm just speculating. It's either that or he's, or he's watching replays of his previous game for some <laughs> strategy points. No, he's watching the YouTube channel. Yeah. Let's get it on there. That's, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> St. Luke's the region's largest sports medicine provider, covering more than 200,000 student enrollment, 40,000 student athletes in Pennsylvania and New Jersey, covering eight counties and providing the most comprehensive and advanced treatment for athletic injuries. St. Luke's offers athletic training, orthopedic care, physical therapy, and concussion management plus sports performance training for individual athletes and teams. During these extraordinary times, you can trust St. Luke's Sports Medicine to provide <coughs> extraordinary care. Let's bring in the standings real quick uh, in the Colonial League, uh, how they ended um, in both divisions. So, uh, you know, Notre Dame's there at 18-0, and and I talked about that earlier with Palmerton on the girls' side being 17-0. and There's a lot of pressure uh, when you have that kind of a season to be able to get – into the championship game. You just want to be able to give yourself a chance after having a season like that. And that's why sometimes playoffs can be, uh, you, you know, so nerve-wracking because you expect to be at a certain place. And Northwestern, on the other hand, and they were nervous to be playing banger the other night because they just wanted this chance. So uh, they kind of have, you know, Coach said, you, you know, they don't have any of the pressure. It's all on Notre Dame. Well, when we come back, we'll get you ready for the third quarter. It's 31-21. Notre Dame leading Northwestern. You're watching our D11sports.com Game of the Week presented by St. Luke Sports Medicine. I believe that St. Luke's and our coaches are going to provide the safest and most comprehensive training environment that a student athlete would want. Hopefully they, they come to us and, and they leave and there's not another need to be filled. We provide it all. There's not another orthopedic group sports medicine group, healthcare system in the country that has high level, degreed certified, years of experience. On the ground, go! Every coach, every parent, they, they want what's best for their student. Okay, They want what's gonna 
help them be the best version of themselves. And so that's what we can provide. I don't think there's anything in this area that can rival it. We are back here at Catasauqua High School. Good look at Eric Snyder. And his team is into the district tournament. Great to see that. And right now, we get ready for second half of play. How important are the first three, four minutes of the game uh, in the second half? I mean, I, I think it's everything for Northwestern. Uh, they have to make sure that they can cut into this lead and not let it build. Uh, and for Northwestern, or I mean for Notre Dame, like we talked about as far as pressure, they got their set themselves this 10-point lead. They can just keep playing the way that they, they were, and it will continue to increase. So they actually have, you know, saved themselves a lot here to be able to get back to playing, you know, basketball the way that they want to play it. All right, back underway. Feet underneath, and the quick dish across, and the basket by Danny Darno as they get him involved. So great start for Notre Dame. They, they ran the set they want, wanted and got the, you know, the shot that they wanted, and they were able to get right back into their pressure that has been giving Northwestern fits. Feed over to Zimmerman. They kick it out. Marth back in the game, and he hits short, but the rebound right there by Gavin Nelson. He's got 11. But that's all predicated on a backdoor cut when – with uh, Notre Dame's pressure, they have to make sure that they go back door to initiate their offense, and they were able to swing the basketball around, get a good look at the basket, and then go to the, the offensive rebounds, which is where they have an advantage. So the lead is 10. Basalo. Uh, nice turnaround by Dave Vassallo. It's crazy. They just get him the ball right in that spot, and they just spread out and let him go to work and, and let him make a, a good decision. And he's really having his imprint all over this game. Well, someone's starting to heat up. That's Nelson. He's got 13. But they're doing a better job of not, not caving to Notre Dame's pressure, of being able to attack it. And they need to continue to do that, but they got to get a stop here. Wow. The big Cameron shot. Bond wow. with his 37 three pointer and second of the game. And they can just attack you from everywhere. Every, everyone on, on their team is always a threat. Well, now they're flying. Big answer. And then Bollinger has 13. Loose ball over to Nelson. And now they got to go. They got to go. Yeah, Coach Wanamaker say they really want to run. We have really seen that. Oh, the pickpocket there by Miles. Miles. Oh, nice play by Isaiah Miles. First points of the night for Isaiah Miles. 40 to 28. Really tough finish with his opposite hand. Nelson, no. Rebound goes to Notre Dame. What? Feet up. Darno, yes. Nice finish. Five in the corner for Darno. It's 42-28. And now Notre Dame's, you know, starting to look like all those Notre Dame teams. You know, all five guys being able to score, playing off each other. Intensity on the defensive end. Forty-two twenty-eight. Nice, nice move and by one. Mark. Needed that one. Shane Marth. He's on the scoreboard. And this, this gives them an opportunity to take a breath here, all right? Because now it looks like, you know, Notre Dame looks like they have that cruise mode about them, that they can just get anything that they want. And, uh, you know, if I'm 
Coach Wanamaker, I might want to change up my defense, throw something at them to get them out of that rhythm, make them think a little bit. Mars with a free throw, cuts the lead to 11. Spin move, and the basket by Boyle, who's got 15. He does a good job of protecting the basketball and using that, those array of spin moves be able to keep the defense off him and still be under control. So we didn't see much of Martha uh, in the first half, but he makes a difference because every time he has the ball, they're looking at him. He stands so tall, he can kick it out anywhere if he wants. Yeah, and he can, yeah he can score inside. Uh, he's got you know 25 threes on the year too, so he can step out. And then on the defensive end, uh, you know he's a rim protector and a rebounder. This is the first. Oh, While well, we're doing a game here. This is both free throws. Those are two big ones that they needed. Miles. Out to Bond. Kicks it out. It goes Boyle again, being able to back down his defender. Boyle fighting Bond. Bond thinking about it. Nowhere to go. He just floats one up oh, and scores. Man. Seriously? Wow. Yeah. And when that's He'll going, take that it's tough. one. Yeah. yeah, right. Biggest lead of the game is now 15. And if you're Northwestern, you got to keep fighting. They got that toughness from, you know, those football players and the guys that made that run, and they know, you know, adversity. They're going to have to dig in right now, but all of them are now reaching on. They dodged the bullet there. If you're Northwestern, you've got to sprint back. They're kind of bailing them out by reaching. Look at this shot here. You know, don't know yeah. what to do. Right-hand yeah. hook works for me. Meanwhile, at Whitehall High School, it's 45-44 with four seconds left. Palmerton is up by one point. Saucon Valley is going to inbound the basketball, while Zimmerman here is taking this one down. Picked off by Boyle going the other way. Oh. Well, this, we'll worry about our game here. But there's. Palmerton just stormed the court. Looks like they've won 45 44, but the officials are looking into that. Sorry, I love doing two games at one time. <laughs> That's all right. So it looks like that game ended. Well, I'm looking at it, but they're bringing them back on the court. So whistle and a foul. Yep. So Palmerton wins it 45-44. And Wombold's going to the line here. Uh, he's a guy, same thing. He's, he's coming off the bench. He's got to be able to give them some energy defensively and offensively. He's got to you know, attack the rim, try to get to the foul line like he is right now. Long ball at 58% from the free throw line. 46-33. Notre Dame's fine taking time here. They're going to run some offensive sets. And they got an array of them where a lot of guys can score and cut. You know, they're all great passers. And, and this is what Coach Wanamaker does not want to see, is it that this becomes a half-court game. Yeah, I was just going to say, Ben, really things started to change a little bit. Yeah, well, when, they, when they're up by 13, they realize they don't have to pressure as much. They can save themselves a little bit and then make Northwestern have to come get them. And if Northwestern has to come get them uh, with pressure in, in any form, uh, Notre Dame is well equipped to deal with it. Ben Kame really got away from you know Northwestern. I mean, they're down by 13. There's still plenty of time left in the game. But what do they have to do here? They have to get like, some kind of rhythm, some kind of run, right? Yeah, and, and they're not getting anything in transition. So they're going to have to find uh, the half-court sets, half-court plays 
that, that they're going to be able to get opportunities off of. They're still trying to play, you know, transition basketball. And, and I think if they go back to that, you know, their offensive set where they have the high ball screen, I think they're going to be able to get better looks. Quick passing. Miles thought about it, now waits. Send this one out to the corner, reset the offense with 2.15 on the clock, up by 13. Biggest lead was 15. Their win against Palmerton. Palmerton winning by a point, 45-44. And Bond wide open oh, for man. three, wow. Yeah, I mean, they worked their butts off there on defense, and the ball just did not bounce away. It bounced right to um, Bond. And obviously, he's a great shooter. He's knocked down a bunch of shots tonight. So we got the foul call on 10, but that, that's really not on 10. That's on, on guys not letting him know uh, that there was a screen coming. Count the basket. So Bollinger has two more. He now has 15. And outside of him, you know, and, and a couple pull-ups uh, by Nelson, they really haven't gotten anything. And, and this is a good timeout call because uh, the game is going to be made here. They're either going to get back into it or Notre Dame's going to run away with it. So they need to come up with some sort of uh, adjustment defensively, and they have to just make sure that they stay focused uh, and continue to play together. But I really do think offensively, if they don't get something in transition, they're going to have to get to something more deliberate so that they can get the look they want. Now, looking ahead, um, if Northwestern will come back and win this one, they will play Palmerton. They lost to Palmerton 63-50 to and 68-52. If it's Notre Dame, well, we know what happened there because we were there at the game. I did that game with Braun Holland. Um, the game that you still wanted to be, be at. <laughs> yeah. It was 85-79. Notre Dame won in double overtime. Double overtime, yeah. So can we have a rematch of that matchup? Yeah, and then, and then that's like two very, very experienced teams, uh, you know, hungry for a title. And what's crazy is we're doing this game here. Ken Termini coach there. He's not there anymore. I'm, he's right, actually across, right across from us. He's doing radio with Tony Smillo from Penn Sports Radio. So he's back in the mix that way. So that, that's the kind of the first empty possession Notre Dame has had um, this quarter. And again, th this pressure here it isn't to speed Northwestern up. It's to just take some, make them think and take some time off the clock with the lead that they have. That's a layup if it's a bounce pass. Yeah, Zimmerman over to Harris. Can't convert, ball loose. Here's Bond. He's got Boyle on the wing. He'll give it to him. Boyle will skip through the defense and score. And should have been a layup on the other end, and they gave one up down here. Those are the kind of, you know, four-point swings that are huge in this game, and there's been a ton of them um, that have gone Notre Dame's way. Back up by 16. Wide open look from the corner. No. That ball tipped. I was going to say, you get within 10, 11 before yeah. you get a third quarter. You know, now all of a sudden you're looking at it. You said it, going one way or going the other. Now you just know that Notre Dame has some sort of call here for the end of, the, the end of this quarter. I wouldn't be surprised if they try to, to hold it for the last play or last shot unless this happens. Boyle had it there. Yeah. Instead, Zimmerman's wide open. He'll take it from Wambold. Oh, excuse me, by Bollinger. And there's a four-point swing for the first time going Northwestern's way. Final 20 seconds. 51-37. Over to Bond. And Zimmerman has it. He'll give that one up. And going in for the deuce is Gavin Nelson. 51-39. And that's an okay foul because it doesn't put him in the bonus. Right. Uh, it slows him down. Now you can reset your defense. And if they can get a stop here, this could have ended more perfect for Northwestern. Right. We were just talking about yeah. getting within 12, getting within 10. Uh, they're right there. Obviously, Pat Boyle is going to draw up a play here to see if he can add to that lead or not. 
But, yeah, th this has been a, a huge swing for them. Gives them a little bit of life. Fifty-one thirty-nine is your score. And if you're just joining us here on D11 Sports, we've had a bunch of games tonight. It, this one was 10-9 after one, 31-21 at the break. Here in the third, and Palmerton winning 45-44. So Palmerton's into the championship, boys and girls. Notre Dame trying to join them. It could be boys and girls, Palmerton versus Northwestern. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how that game ended with uh, – because didn't you say Southern – or Southern Lehigh, Saucon Valley was up on Palmerton. Yes. So – that'd be there was a couple free, big throw, plays. free throws at the end. Okay. Um, I thought I thought it was Mahalik, but I'm not positive. There was an injury for a prominent player though in the last 10 seconds. He was down for a few minutes. I don't okay. know who that player was. All right, 1.7. I think they'll run the same play here probably. Trying to get a look into the corner or Vassallo might just and time will run out. 51-39, Notre Dame. You're watching our D11sports.com Game of the Week presented by St. Luke's Sports Medicine. It's here for real. It's St. Luke's Children's Hospital, ready to help all kids. They're keeping kids healthy, fixing us up, making us feel better, helping kids be the best they can be because it's about us. The kids, it's St. Luke's Children's Hospital! St. Luke's Children's Hospital is helping kids with everything, from routine checkups to specialized care. It's here! It's great! Yeah! Since 1919, the name Reichenbach Oil has been synonymous with reliability and community. That's because for the past 100 years, we've been delivering heating oil to Lehigh Valley homes at ultra-competitive pricing seven days a week with auto delivery and easy payment options to fit your needs. And we offer same-day delivery. When you need oil delivered, think Reichenbach. 100 years of serving the Lehigh Valley community. Reichenbach Oil, delivery you can count on. We are back here at Catasauqua High School. I want to thank Tom Mole for his hospitality once again. Al Dicola, Ben Tannis, who had 14 pieces of pizza <laughs> earlier tonight. <coughs> Uh, ben, your thoughts through three. You talked about a, a, a little change there, you know, the momentum change. You know, maybe going up by 16 or whatever, and instead it's, it's only up 51-39. Yeah, Northwestern needed that. So they were able to get back in this game. It was a 12-point game. I was a little worried about, you know, you know, Notre Dame comes out and has the ball again. They had the ball to start uh, the third quarter and were able to get a good set, so they had the ball here. I think they had something drawn up. Um, but so it was a good stop by Northwestern. So now they have a chance to get back into this game. And like Coach Boyle said at halftime, Northwestern's never out of it. Uh, they can score in bunches uh, just like they did in their quarterfinal win to get here. You know, earlier I was going to say the way the game is going at 16, you know, you want to be in that range. But here's Zimmerman goes to the glass and scores. And was able to hang, get in there. But they reversed the ball a couple times. They were able to deal with the pressure and reverse the basketball a couple times to get a score. And see if they can get it double digits with a stop here. Fifty-one forty-one, up by ten. I would say if you get within single digits by the four-minute mark, you're okay. But now if you're Northwestern, you don't want single digits. You want a little bit closer than that. There, yeah. momentum swinging right now. And that's what they double that ball screen. They have to reverse the ball quicker. Good look at a three, not there. It looked like Kick it was outside down. here, Zimmerman. A great rebound, and Zimmerman will go to the free throw line. 
So Northwestern feeling a little bit more confident. You can see the confidence in their body language as well. This is a good shot. I thought this was actually down, but this is where they are best, being able to go get offensive rebounds. So they have to be able to get quality looks at the basket and then crash the boards. But that starts with being able to deal with their pressure, which they've been doing a much better job of here in this fourth quarter. So Zimmerman at the free throw line is at 75%. He's got four points tonight. They'll bring in Marth, see if they can get that rebound. He'll battle down low with Danny Darno. So Zimmerman makes one of two. It's now a nine point game. And Notre Dame's kind of content here to play their half court offense. Stopping and popping is Isaiah Miles. Isaiah Miles. And they just went back to their basic motion offense, playing off each other, but he... Lombold thought he had that one, and he got deflected. Yeah, that was a missed opportunity because they played Northwestern basketball. They ran the ball right back at him. They had a layup opportunity. They got to be able to finish that. Masalo. Boyle thought about it. Gives it up to Vassallo, that one taken away. Oh man. Thought he was gonna give it up, did not. Instead, they get the rebound, can't convert. Two rebounds in a row by Marth. Can't get that one, he gets a third rebound, goes right up with it, and scores! Hey. Dave Marth, huge basket. Yeah, that was huge, staying with it. And we talked about, you know, are they gonna have the will to be able to keep playing? Are they gonna have the toughness? They have it right now because Miles played that two-on-one fast break better than anybody I've ever seen play a two-on-one fast break. Oh, Marth with a huge deflection. He and knocks that one away. Zimmerman wide open from the corner for three. That one hits the back of the rim. They get the rebound. Up, whistle and a foul. We'll send Gavin Nelson to the free throw line. And that's big, if he gets that a little bit higher on the glass, he's gonna be able to have a three point play. But he, here's a good job by Marth being able to get up there and block this shot, being able to be a rim protector. He doesn't even need to jump that high, he's just so long. Makes the first. Now we can, we can sense Notre Dame just a little bit rattled here. And let's see how they respond. Nelson hits both. I don't know if you noticed this, Ben, but it's a seven-point game. Yeah. Are you aware of this? I am aware, yes. Okay, I'm just uh, checking. <laughs> it was 16. <laughs> yeah, and that happened quickly. It happened with, you know, those, just those two straight possessions in the third quarter that gave them life. With, with 25 seconds. That's a good call by Coach, or uh, by Mr. Bosak there. He could have called the foul, but I think it was a bang-bang play there and just giving possession and keeping it with Notre Dame. That's a good sign of a veteran official. Look at you, Carl Rob, <laughs> Mr. Bosak. <laughs> Impressive, he's still nice to the official. <laughs> Bond, so here we are at the midway point of the fourth quarter. Ooh. Oh. That looked like a turnover. Coach Wanamaker's not gonna like that one. Yeah, that looked like it was clean. Bollinger going to double team. And it looks like he was losing it as he was going down. He might have gotten fouled, but it looked like he was already he had already lost it. Notre Dame's got to do a good job of rotating now. They double teamed. They looked a little gassed right now. They got to stay home and stay disciplined defensively. Boyle can't convert, ball loose. He comes back to him. He gets it right back. Sends oh, it outside. Bond wide open for three. Doesn't get it. And a great rebound by Northwestern. He's going to need some help. And they'll give it up to Wombald. Over to Eli. This has been effective on the night. He'll go back to the free throw line. That, 
that was very impressive by Bollinger being able to deal with that rebound and deal with the pressure. And again, only as a sophomore, he's impressive physically. And then, you know, mentally, he doesn't just throw this basketball away. He stays strong with it. These guys are all over him. He's able to get it up and get his guys a transition opportunity. And all of a sudden, Notre Dame is now feeling that pressure, and that, that is showing on the offensive side of, of the floor. 6-point lead, 43, 53-47, 330 left. Winner gets Palmerton, who won earlier tonight, 45-44. And Vassallo, easy pickings. And Marth went for the charge. And then when he went down, there was no one left to grab a rebound. Nice pass. Underneath. Count it. Marth. And that's the... That's the advantage of having Marth in there. You know, with that pressure, if you're able to just lob it up to him, um, he's able to come down with it and finish it. It's an easy outlet pass. Looks like Coach Wanamaker's just trying to give uh, Bollinger and Nelson a quick rest here. I don't think he's going to have them out of the game for too long. Put a trap. Bond, they'll kick it back outside. It looks like Northwestern's trying to get into the penalty early here. I feel like they should have kind of just let their defense continue to do what it was doing because I think I feel like they were having success. Zimmerman real tight on the defense. They go for the steal, don't get it. And underneath, nice pass by Boyle, but that one knocked away. Marth with another one. Third wow. effort, however, is great there by Caleb Hobby. That was huge. Yeah, we talk about Marth staying with it and down off the other end. Um, you know, you got Hobby coming in who hasn't seen much time tonight, but he was just staying with it. Uh, and there was a couple times that it looked like it was going to be Northwestern's ball here. Gets it blocked, stays with it. Fights through three guys. He still ends up with the ball. He was just so quick to it. Now the lead's back up to eight. Uh, Northwestern's got to continue to just look to attack, and, and they've been having success being able to throw the ball to the corner and have Zimmerman drive. Now let's see if Zimmer can, Zimmerman can drive again, and if he doesn't finish himself, he's going to be able to, to kick it, uh, you know, maybe to a willing three-point shooter or to Marth or to uh, Bollinger inside. Quarter brought to you by Strategic Benefits One Group in the Lehigh Valley, a premier broker in helping small, medium, and biz large businesses build a competitive employee benefits package, which includes retirement plan services and managing clients locally, as well as more than 12 states. Visit their website at strategicbenefitsonegroup.com. We thank them for their continued dedication and support of d11sports.com. Mike Lagoe and Strategic Benefits One Group. Now, this one coming down to the wire. It got close there, and it looks like, I mean, an eight point lead looks like. 20 right now, yeah. considering it was just six, but that's only two points. Yeah, and, and I think it was a when Northwestern started to foul, it kind of disrupted the flow of the game, and Northwestern had had the game going their way. Bollinger, Bollinger can, can, continues to get whatever he wants on the offensive end. So now they got to be smart here. They picked up all those fouls. They don't want to give up easy easy points at the foul line. So they don't need to reach in. They just need to make sure that they play solid defense. Up by seven, or excuse me, by six. Oh, 
Boyle. So Boyle, as well as a shooter he is from, you know, going inside, outside, from the free throw line, 27 of 43, 63%. So these are big ones here for his confidence. If he continues to have the ball in his hands, he's going to have to be able to put the ball in the basket from the foul line. He stepped off the line. He's got to stay on the line. Tannis seeing everything. <laughs> Sean Kelly with a yawn, past his bedtime. <laughs> 18 for Boyle. Nelson, no. Oh. Morris has done a, a big, he's been really the difference in the fourth quarter. Yeah, he's created a lot of extra opportunities for his teammates. Um, you know, as well as being able to finish around the rim. The winner gets Palmerton. Palmerton, if it is Notre Dame, went double overtime with Notre Dame winning that game. Game seen on D11 Sports back in January. Northwestern saying, hey, there's still time. Yeah, that was great pass by Wombold uh, to Nelson. Uh, Nelson's got to finish these here. He's 81 point or 81 percent foul shooter. And I could be wrong here, but I don't know what they've shot from the foul line, uh, Northwestern here. But I feel like they've left a, left a bunch of opportunities there. Um, well, they've made here, seven. In the yeah, they've made quarter. seven free throws on the night. One of two there for Nelson. They got to see if they can get a stop here without fouling. Well, instead, pass down to Hobby. But still, it's an eight point game 60 to 52. There's Zimmerman on the baseline again. Nice finish. Now, if you need a spark. Eli Zimmerman will give you that. And, and, you know, in the beginning of the game, he was kind of hanging out further away from the basket. The second half, he's been on the baseline where he's been getting this rip through constantly. And that's a big-time finish against Big Vasalo in there. Yeah, he's either going in or he's, or, or he's kicking out, but usually yeah. he's going in and trying to get the foul. Game brought to you by Reichenbach Oil Company, celebrating over 100 years of providing the Lehigh Valley with convenient, reliable home heating oil delivery. Mm. Proud to support all District 11 athletics. Mentioned you heard us on the D11 Sports Game broadcast and received $25 off of your next delivery. D11 Sports also thanks Joseph Hoffmeyer, Senior Vice President and Financial Advisor at Morgan Stanley in Allentown for their sponsorship of tonight's game. For all your investment needs, call Joseph Hoffmeyer at 610-391-6353, located at 515 West Hamilton Street. Seventh floor in Allentown, Morgan Stanley Smith Barney LLC member SIPC. So glad you could join us here. Again, historical night for D11 Sports. I don't even use that word historical. It sounds like we're like I'm, we're the president of the United States. You know, maybe Dave. But Dave can run for president, by the way. <laughs> I don't know if you get any votes, but he can run. But three live streams going on uh, simultaneously in uh, in Pottsville at Mart's Hall, uh, over at Whitehall, and here. Um, tomorrow will be March Hall for the girls, and then Friday night will be at March Hall for the doubleheader, and also for the doubleheader at Freedom High School. So excited that you can take part. Again, I want to thank our crew from the Sports Fan Base Network for pushing all the right buttons and getting everything done. We appreciate their help each and every time, and they're traveling around and doing great things for us. 60-54, your score zoom into the free throw line, trying to convert on a three-point play, and he does, and this is the closest they've been in a long time. And this game is far from over with... You know, they almost had the steal, yeah, they and then did. they went for the foul. I, I, it's, it's far from over when you look at the foul shooting of Notre Dame, at, at least as far as the numbers go. Who knows what's going to happen here in the next 40 seconds. Um, but, you know, it gives you a chance just looking at those different percentages. So five-point game, 40 seconds left. And Boyle in and out. Yeah. 
Second one is good. Northern's 19. Northwestern's got to go here. Oh. And playing a little bit further out. On the kick out. Oh, they man. get the ball right back again. Nice dish across. And can't score. Second okay. effort is good. Longer has that one. He's got two more. Northwestern So now I think if you're Northwestern, I think I, I think the time to like get a trap, unless it's a perfect one, is gone. I think you gotta get a steal right away. But a uh, rare mistake there by Boyle, putting the ball on the floor when you get a steal. He should have just held on to that, let everybody run ahead. Um, but he gave them an opportunity to get it to four here. Well, as interesting as the game has become, it's still relatively quiet in here. Yeah. You hear like a pin drop in here. I know. It does not sound like a, like a normal, normal Notre Dame game. 61-57, your score. Again, the winner will get Palmerton. Palmerton winning 45-44 with free throws with four seconds left. Notre Dame, by the way, has not lost to a District 11 team. Their only losses were to Shaler, 65-42, and State College, 70-59. That was over the holiday break tournament. Yeah, a lot of wins this year for them. You know, they're used to, to winning games, and, and, you know, they, they've won a lot of uh, blowout games. But they've also played some tough competition in close games, and, uh, you know, that, that's an advantage to them here that they've had so many of those wins against these teams. No, this is not what you want to do if you're Notre Dame. Yeah, and now if you remember, I talked about this well, in the girls game. Yes. Yeah. And they throw it deep and it goes out of bounds there, but it looks like it was touched. Okay. I was going to yeah. say, that should have been under. Yeah, I think, I think, I think uh, Javi was actually able to get a hand on it. So since he was able to get a hand on it, it it's taken back there. You get the two here? Yeah, I think you get whatever you can quickly. Uh, Splits the defense, lost the ball, and jump ball possession arrow to Northwestern yeah, with five, five seconds left. Yeah, they got to go quickly. They got to go real quick. That, that took too much time. <laughs> Notre Dame calls a timeout with five and a half seconds left. So if, I, if I'm Northwestern here, you, you know, I'd run a play to look for a three, to be a diversion, and then be able to throw the ball underneath the basket, um, you know, to hopefully if Notre Dame guys are running out to that three-point line. Get a quick one, and I, I don't know if they have a timeout left. Call the quick timeout. Get your um, defense set up so that you can foul immediately, so that you give yourself a chance. Because if you score here, foul them right away. The hope is that they make one of two or none, and then you have a chance at the end of the game. Yep. But but if you'd shoot a you know a contested tough three, you know what are the chances of that going in? By all means, if you're wide open, yeah. But I'd run something for a layup. Now a four point game, 10-9 after one Notre Dame. Notre Dame left 31-21 at the half, 51-39 after three. They led by as many as 16 on a couple of occasions, but now it's down to four. And right now, what is what is Notre Dame do? Notre Dame just letting them score or? Yeah. Confusing? Yes, yeah, very confusing. Well, the clock went down. The clock went down There's bunch, no yeah. way that's the clock. I don't know. I think Coach Boyle was just letting them score and because he's got confidence they're going to make both? I don't know. All right, so they banged the timeout. Not sure if they had the timeout. Uh, they're saying there's going to be a technical foul, but they put – I think they should put more time than that on the clock. Okay, so it makes sense if they had no timeout. If they had no timeout – Because they would inbound the ball and it would They wouldn't even need to inbound it. They could just take the basketball and then, you know, wait till five seconds and then just launch it in the air. But – because but they had no give, timeout. Does this give the, despite the technical, which we believe that's going to happen, does this give them the best chance here for no Northwestern, knowing, okay, they're going to get the, the points with within two. They make one. Then they get the inbound. You foul them. You still have 1.9 left. I'm just saying. 
That, yeah, it, it all if comes down to foul shooting. Because you can't – Yeah. if you don't take a timeout that you don't have anyway, the game's over regardless. Yeah. So he plays odds regardless. Yeah. Gave himself a chance. So I, you know, so I don't know if they. Well, I, I oh think. Yeah, here's the technical. Okay. I think that Coach Poyle kind of like forced, Rob, Rob, uh, no you know, Wanamaker's hands. All right, Miles with two free throws, excessive timeout on purpose to stop the, the clock. Yeah, the only issue is then, you know, like when you get the technical foul, now Coach Boyle gets to pick who he's putting on the foul line. Right. And obviously he picked the right guy. Who did he pick? <laughs> Isaiah Miles. Yep. And now there's a foul before the inbound. So he kind of made it impossible. Now you're putting a lot of faith in Miles to make those two foul shots. And then you, you almost wonder if they're letting you score on the other end. Do you take an uncontested three and hope to cut it to one? Interesting. Yeah. Uh, it's still a four-point game, so. But now, yeah, it's a four-point game, and now he just told all his guys not to move. They're just going to stand there and let him score again. Well, defending champs. Or back into the championship. So it will be an all Palmerton Notre Dame final on Friday night at Freedom High School. Yeah, that, that second quarter killed Northwestern. Uh, you know, they really that's that's where the game was kind of decided. They got out of out of playing the way that they normally play. Uh, the pressure of Notre Dame got to them, and that's where they were able to build that 10-point lead because for a better part of the second half, uh, Northwestern kind of outplayed them. All right, Jensen Buse trying to track down Pat Boyle, and she does. She's got Coach Boyle, I think. She had him for a second. Yeah, he's just wandering around out there. All right, so we got right. And we go down to Jensen Buse. Hi, I'm Jensen Buse, and I'm here with Colin Boyle of the Notre Dame Crusaders after they defeated Northwestern Lehigh 64-59 in the Colonial League semifinals. Colin, what are your thoughts on tonight's game? Uh, I thought we really battled. Uh, I had a couple mental mistakes at the end, so that one's on me. But I really liked how our team fought till the end. Uh, we never gave up, and they didn't give up either. It's all a credit to them. They play really, really hard, and they don't sit back in a zone. They came and played us as hard as they could, and I respect their coach for that, and I respect all their players. Mm -hmm. And the tensions were high on the court. I mean, everyone in this gym could feel it. What, what did you do to keep your emotions in check? Uh, in school, we learn a lot about breathing. So I told our guys, just keep breathing. It's the playoffs. This is going to happen. You knew Northwestern was going to come with energy. So I just told our guys, keep breathing. Mm -hmm. Great job, and good luck in the championship. Thank you very much. Back to you guys. All right, Jensen, thanks a lot. She's going to try to get Coach Boyle right now uh, as he's waiting for him. And she has Coach Boyle. And I know Pat's going to have a little smile on his face. And we go down to Jensen. Hi, I'm here with Coach Boyle of the Notre Dame Crusaders. So, Coach Boyle, what are your final thoughts on tonight's game? Uh, you know, it's very similar to last time we played them, uh, and it came right down to the wire. And uh, I thought we'd handle the, the end-of-game situations a little better this time. Uh, Colin Boyle is one of the smartest kids I've ever coached, and he throws the ball long. <laughs> Long when we just needed to make a safe pass, but Kyle made a ton of plays for us. Uh, that's why he's co-MVP of the league. Mm -hmm. And looking forward, you're going to have to face Palmerton, a team that you had to go into overtime to beat. What is going to be the biggest key to beating them? Well, last time we played them, we gave up 30 to Hozier and 27 to Mahalik. Uh, we were able to win the game, but if we, we, we can't afford to do that again. Uh, we're we're going to have to do a better job of containing those guys and do a better job, uh, you know, better job moving the ball and, and having better player and ball movement than we had in the second half. Mm -hmm. Great job and good luck. Thank you. Back to you guys. Thank you, Jensen. Great job tonight. Uh, we appreciate her efforts. The championship will be Palmerton-Notre Dame, both boys and girls. Final scoring in this one, 
Um, eight points for Miles, four points for Smith, Boyle with 19, 12 points for Bond, Vasala with 12, four for Hobby, seven for Darno, 19 for Bollinger, seven for Zimmerman, Wombald with one, one point for Kozlowski, uh, Nelson finishes with 18, and Marth finishes with six. And as they get ready moving forward, it will be into the postseason, into the postseason play um, for both teams. You know, one in the 4A classification, the other one in the 3A classification, as I lose my notes. But, uh, you know, they'll go there. Your final thoughts on this one? No, I thought it was a great game. Like I said, uh, I think uh, Northwestern kind of fell, fell from who they were in the second quarter there, and that, and that was the big difference. But they showed a lot of heart coming back. Well-fought game. Uh, it was uh, enjoyable to watch, and it's going to be another great one uh, Friday night and definitely going to have a lot of noise with it being a uh, Palmerton-Notre Dame doubleheader. Yeah. Uh, 3A class, by the way, districts, executive, Notre Dame, Palmerton, those three. So, uh, you know, the winner of that game could get the top seed uh, in districts. And the 4A, Blue Mountain won already, Central Catholic, Pottsville lost tonight, North Skuka lost tonight, Northwestern's in the mix as well as Lee Hutton and a couple other teams. That'll do it for tonight. We want to thank Tom Mole for having us here and everyone else as well. Uh, thanks to our crew, not only here, but also at Whitehall and also at Martell. Hope you enjoyed this one. It's going to be all Palmerton and Notre Dame. Again, the last time they met up, it was on D11 Sports. It was double overtime in favor of Notre Dame. 65, excuse me, 64-59, your final score for Jensen Buse, for Ben Tannis, for Sean Kelly, for everyone here at D11 Sports. I'm Aldo Carlos saying so long. Final score, 64-59, Notre Dame into the championship. Have a great night, everyone.